more than a little mad at Elizabeth K. Wine right now. <laughs> more than a little mad, um, because I don't know how you follow that. Wow, Danielle. Um, Shoo. So, um, nervous, yeah, prepared, not as much as I'd like to, humbled for sure to be in a room of powerful women and the men who love us and support us. Um, I uh, have been stalked by this beautiful woman who asked me to speak here uh, for a couple of days, weeks, months about writing this piece, um, <laughs> which I've, uh, I've avoided not because I don't like to do my homework, but because I've been a little anxious about having this talk. I finally sent it to her yesterday and she didn't kick me out. Um, and I sort of thought maybe I should have said no, um, but I'm glad now I said yes, because this feels like the right space to just talk about uh, the interesting and hard parts of being a woman. Um, I uh, am not here to talk about being uh, raped, uh, though I could. Uh, what I am here to talk about is um, where women go to grieve, um, in particular how we figure out how um, to do that. I uh, thought this would be a great room to talk um, about learning to ask for help, um, which is something that women so graciously offer but so rarely seek, right? Like all of you would do anything for me. Some of you I've only met, and I know you would. You'd bring me a meal, you'd bring me tissue as I stand up here and sob. Um, you'd come help me um, move, you'd bring me like stones to give me strength when I'm really struggling. Um, but yeah, thank you. Uh, the dudes show up too. <laughs> you got us, thank you. Um, and, and so this talk for me is a little bit about learning to ask for help. And I'm gonna, through the course of this, ask for your help, your patience, your grace, in a um, ill-prepared but uh, really important talk. Um, two months ago, uh, I lost my little sister. Uh, she was 47, so little is relative. Um, where are you, Nancy? Yes, I'm, I'm that old. <laughs> um, she drew her final breath in my ear, um, and in that moment, like literally the worst pain I've ever felt in my life, um, met what I hope was her greatest peace. Um, and so maybe there's a gift in that. Uh, we're like sealed in that moment, like forever, right? Um, and I'm not sure what to do with it. I'm not sure what to do with the pain. I'm not sure where to take it, where to pack it. Um, it's a process. So Danielle, you were like teaching me as I was sitting there, like this is a process. Um, I feel like uh, I miss her now more than I missed her then and less than I'll miss her tomorrow. Um, and at her service, which is actually right behind um, here at Midtown Crossing Grill because Octavia is a part of the tribe that gives me strength. Um, I thanked all of the people in this community who supported us, right? Like people who showed up and brought ice cream for dinner, who brought stones, who rubbed lotion on her feet with me, um, who gave me the space to be sad and to be um, scared and, um, and to make decisions that I hope I never have to make again, literally. Um, people filled this room where my sister died, like people who only knew her a little um, because they loved us. Um, and they kept asking me, like, how can we help? How can we help? And what I knew was they were just helping by being there, right? Like, they lessened my pain, they staved my fears, and they gave me, like, a reason to believe. Um, but I didn't know how to ask for help. It just kept showing up. In fact, the day my sister died, um, we had this sort of caring bridge and text uh, engagement, and I was like the force, the decision maker, the person by the bedside, the mom, the wife, uh, my, some of my kids and my husband are here, like trying to keep it all together, communicating with everyone what was going on. Um, and at one point on one day, I stopped communicating. Um, no texts, no updates, no nothing, and everyone knew something was wrong. Um, the entire ICU 
unit told me, call for help, call for help, get your family here, you need your family here, and I couldn't, I didn't know how, because them coming meant what was coming, was coming, um, and the most amazing thing happened, like, all of these people showed up, they knew that my lack of communication meant that I was in trouble, so they came, and that's awesome. <laughs> But it didn't teach me how to ask for help. <laughs> it just taught me how to hopefully receive it. Um, so what's interesting, uh, like rainy season Memphis, I blame my sister. I swear to you, it has been raining since my sister died. Um, and if I can figure this out, I promise you it's going to be sunny again. So I do think that like my sadness is linked to this garbage um, and like the leak in my roof that just is pouring rain into my house and ruining my <laughs> drywall um, is all about like this sadness that I haven't figured out how to handle. Um, and, and I think that is unique to my being a woman because I feel like I have to be like the superhero of my life, like figuring it all out, making sure everyone's going to be okay. Um, and I know that my daughter will tell me that that's not true and that's not an expectation, but it is the expectation I carry with me. Um, and so trying to teach myself that that's not true has been really hard. Um, also, the urgency and obvious space for support has sort of evaporated, right? Like 70 days have passed. Life goes on. Um, not for Annie and, and, and for a huge part of my heart, not for me, but people return to life. Um, those sort of 47 years of life have turned into learning to live in these last 70 or last 70 days of life. Um, and I haven't learned how to ask for help, so it's not coming, right? Um, I've been moving toward the realization that my sister's not here, um, but I'm also not necessarily willing to accept that she's not here. Um, so what do I do? I move through business. I do business. I'm a CEO. I you know, run a business. I help other people start businesses. I run my family. I run my house. Um, and that's all awesome because then I don't have to deal with learning how to ask for help. Um, so uh, what I wanted to talk to uh, y'all about tonight is grief. Um, I've been doing a lot of studying about grief. People have been dying on me since I was nine. You'd think I'd be better at this, um, but I'm not. Um, so I've been studying like grief lately. Uh, denial, like check, check, <laughs> check. I've got that nail, y'all. I own denial. Um, I'm going to win an award in denial. Um, this is definitely not happening to me. Uh, anger. Anger, I got that, like I'm really mad. My uh, sister died uh, and she was young and I need her. Uh, my dad is dying of cancer and I need her to help me take care of that and she's not here and I'm pissed, really pissed. Um, I think she made choices that may have contributed to that and that may or may not be true but it makes me mad. Um, bargaining, like I'm a deal maker, right? Like my job is to make deals with people and I usually win. Like. <laughs> The other people win too, but I, like, I win. We close a deal and everybody feels satisfied. And this is the part that's the most frustrating to me. I can't negotiate this deal favorably. The outcome sucks. In every situation, the outcome sucks. Um, so I'm not going to get what I need out of this deal. Um, depression. Yep. Um, <laughs> probably. Probably a lot of that. Um, <laughs> But I'm trying to sort of, you know, keep that somewhere else. Um, and then acceptance, right? They talk about this place of acceptance. I mean, I don't know. Um, that seems highly unlikely to me <laughs> at this point. Um, but the thing that seems missing to me uh, is the notion of permission. What I haven't been able to find or grant myself is permission. Um, the permission to just be sad here with y'all, like, I haven't done that. The permission to talk about this, it was mentioned to me this weekend by my very family that I don't talk about this, and I do, but only in very quiet spaces and usually when I'm by myself. Um, 
So permission, like, do we have permission to grieve? Can we all like collectively grant ourselves permission to not call it maybe rape and to call it rape rape and to call this grief and to really just be fucking sad? Um, that's, that's what I want. I'm asking you for collective permission to grieve um, and I suspect you're going to give it to me. Um, I really want the permission to take the time to figure out where all of the broken pieces of my heart are and put them back together so that I can keep loving and living and not being so desperately afraid that someone else is not going to be here or that I'm not gonna figure out how not to have my little sister who's literally been with me for every day of my life and as long as I can remember. Um, I don't wanna be paralyzed and scared, um, but I, I need to find the time to grieve. Um, so I know I'm not gonna find those answers by myself, but I suspect in those spaces out here um, that you can help me find those answers. And so my commitment uh, to myself and my request of you is that while we're getting super wicked drunk <laughs> so that we can spend lots of money on this cool like, you know, pussy cupcakes and uh, bougie uh, coffee mugs, that you'll um, give me uh, some support as I move through this process of grieving. Thank you. Um, and so with that, um, permission granted and gratitude extended. Thank you for having me. I'm sorry I wasn't a better and more uh, fully prepared speaker. But y'all are the best. Thank you very much.